Hey guys, so uh, I wanted to make a video on composting. So uh, first off, I'm going to show you my favorite method, which is known as trench composting. What you got to do is you got to dig a trench and then you bury it, say like 15 to 30 centimeters down. I'm closer to that 15 centimeter mark. So uh, all you got to do is I'm going to sit you down here and show you what to do. So nothing really to it. All you got to do um, is just... Sometimes what I also like to do when I'm doing this is uh, throw in some aggregate from the uh, native soil. Make sure I get all these weed roots out. Ooh. Almost killed the fucking pepper. So yeah, you just do that. Shake the shit out of it so you get kind of like to chop up some of it. Give it something, something for the worms to kind of eat on a little bit easier. Now the only reason why I only did this one so short is just, just because that's about as much as the bucket would go to. So uh, next week what I'm going to do is once the bucket's filled back up, I'm going to extend it out there. Also, by the way, the Avon bug spray says it's good for three hours. It has three hours of protection for three whole minutes. That's called false advertising. So yeah, just keep chopping it up more. And once you're done with that, you just take your wheel, wheelbarrow of dirt, just throw her back on. Uh, yeah, so you guys might have to bear with me here. I'm kind of... My asthma is acting up, so kind of short of breath. Um, so this is one of my, this is probably my absolute favorite form of composting. It's a type of uh, passive composting that I like to call squash composting. So what you do is you have these, uh, you basically fill up your composter. Until it's like right full. Of course I'll put in some like dirt and clay and stuff just to kind of just to kind of give it some minerals to actually grow and produce properly because plants do need minerals and they're not going to get all of the minerals and just rot so I will layer it up with some uh, with some native clay and native dirt and uh, basically what will happen is as the uh, as the organic matter from the kitchen underneath here as it decays the roots sort of slowly go down and even break it up even more with the feeder roots so this is a great form of passive composting for me because sometimes i don't necessarily have the time to do hot composting you know turning it all the time turning it turning it and turning it and turning it just to keep the uh, heat up and sometimes you don't always it doesn't always work out so you have to really practice and practice and practice until it's like right perfect. Um, I think the only time I ever managed to get hot composting done properly was throughout the winter when I was just layering up only spent beer grain and um, spent beer grain and used coffee grinds. And that just broke it down completely. So, uh, what I'll, what I like to do with this, uh, this type of stuff is as it breaks down throughout the summer from the uh, feeder roots eating it, when it's done in the summer after I'm done harvesting the, uh, the squash, what I like to do is come over here to the big composter for the winter and kind of let it age for a little bit. And then throughout the winter, I'll fill up the, the squash compost bins. So, yeah. So this, this is kind of what's left of my compost heap from uh, last year. There's a little bit of horse manure in there, some grass clippings and shit. Um, throughout the summer, I do fill this thing up with grass clippings and leaves. So, 
this is probably another form of uh, passive composting. But uh, turn you around. Now, we all know about the hot composting method. Um, and then there's also Bokashi composting, which is more similar to what I did over there in the uh, beside the onions. Um, Bokashi composting is basically just another form of uh, is basically just another form of trench composting. Now, in radish tire here, I did decide to do a form of, of Bokashi composting. Now, what makes Bokashi composting work? is there's a bacteria called uh, lactobacillus. It's often used a lot in cheese and other stuff like that, but it's also found in yogurt. So what I did was, when I was done eating my yogurt cup, I filled it up with a little bit of milk and water, and shook the shit out of it, and then just when I put the, uh, I put spent brew grain and on the day of the brew, there was also a bunch of stuff in the uh, fridge that was going moldy and stuff, so I just added that to it. And then I put the tire down, put the uh, spent brew grain and other stuff in there at the bottom, and then as it, after it cooled down completely, I drizzled on the uh, my culture. So basically, this is kind of acting like a Bokashi compost. So, yeah. Yeah, I just forgot to mention that... Uh, what I did there isn't really true Bokashi composting. What you normally have to do is you throw all of your kitchen scraps, meat, whatever the hell, whatever the hell you got, throw it in there with some, uh, something that contains the lactobacillus. And then you put like a plate on top of it inside the bucket. And then you, uh, you just close the lid and then you put it somewhere for like two to three weeks and then you find some place in your garden to bury it or you put it at the bottom of your pots if you're uh if you're in an apartment so uh my brother my older brother's in an apartment right now and he has a uh he has a balcony which is perfect so uh so what he's doing with his balcony is he wants to put some plants there and the bokashi composting for him is absolutely perfect there's tons of other different types of composting. Like, you can just take straight up horse manure and then just till it right into the, till it right into the ground and then just plant some peas and let them take over. And then just, before they uh, start to, uh, before the peas start to develop seeds, just plow it right down, chop it down. as like a natural manure. Or like a green manure type thing. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, hopefully this video was helpful. It probably wasn't, but. Grow green thumb. I'll show off my potatoes. They're a little bit close together, but these ones are red varieties that I got from the grocery store. These ones are also red varieties that I got from the grocery store. And these ones are a mixture of different, different types of russets. There's some potato, like grade B potatoes that came from the actual McCain potato farm here in New Brunswick. So, again, that's cool. And you can see that patch of wheat and barley is growing a little bit better than that patch. I don't know why. It's definitely not that piece of plastic. I will get rid of that, but peace.